I don't know what I did to anger Mika and Andrew to have me follow Dana Boyd and precede uh, uh, David Weinberger. Uh, but as Weinberger said, at least uh, we're far away from Clay Shirky who speaks tomorrow. Uh, you have a choice. You can have my Bell PowerPoint slides or you can have the Twitter uh, backstream. Vote. Twitter. Of course. Twitter, please. Can we switch to Twitter? <laughs> uh, when you speak of me, and you will be nice. Um, so, uh, Google government. I want to I try to talk fast, which is what I always do, and try to get down in, in there and have a, a free for all about what Google government means. But I don't mean government by Google. I really mean government for the Google age, for our age today. I didn't write a book about Google, set out to do that. I instead wanted to write about the changes in our era. I believe firmly we are moving from the industrial era, from the era of mass production, mass distribution, mass marketing, and mass media onto what follows. And we don't know what that form is yet, but it has something to do with knowledge and abundance. So I wanted to try to see that through the eyes of Google to understand that. And I came up with a bunch of rules that I'll go through a few quickly about how this new world operates. Uh, you know, what we see here is, is an avalanche. And the avalanche has first hit those uh, sectors of society that are closest to what Google does. So newspapers, <coughs> magazines, TV, right? It's gonna hit everything uh, in time. It's gonna come next to advertising and retail and real estate. And it is going to hit government. I am sure of that. Someone will, and I say this is a very good thing, Craigslist government. They'll find a way to pull the rug out from underneath and do things in a new way that they didn't think of. And you are the people who are going to do that. Um, so these are, these are fundamental changes, and those changes are going to operate under new rules. I have watched my friends and former colleagues in the newspaper industry try to preserve their old world in this new world, and it does not work. Nor will it work now to try to put up little barriers and, and charges, but Clay can speak better to that than I can. So a few of the rules. One is, I think, obvious to this group. Uh, I call it, with hubris, my own first law. If you give the people control, and we will use it, don't, and you will lose us. It is fundamental and obvious. It is a fundamental part of democracy, but we were never democratic enough. But I, we've learned through commerce, whether it's a Dell computer or whether it's an issue in government, that you have the opportunity now to speak more than ever before, and that changes the relationship fundamentally. Um, transparency. When I bring this up, people say, well, yeah, 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 Jarvis, but Google's not transparent. True. Stipulated, Your Honor. Uh, but Google expects all of us to be transparent. And, and you've talked about that earlier. I saw on Twitter Andrew talking about this earlier. But we have to make transparency the default of government. I, I joked in last year's PDF that we should abolish the Freedom of Information Act because we shouldn't have to ask government for permission to get our information. They should have to ask permission from us to not give it to us. And we've got to make government by default searchable and linkable. Right? And I know you believe that, but how do we get, go about and do it? And I'm going to talk in a few minutes about some issues that, that arise from that. Um, we're in an era of abundance, not scarcity. We've ruled this world on, on the notion of scarcity in business, scarcity in government, scarcity of time, scarcity of goods. But in a knowledge environment now, there is nothing but abundance, and it changes our relationship with how we do things. Um, we're past the mass media era, past the mass era. Uh, my friend Jay Rosen uh, taught me the great quote from the uh, um, Raymond Williams, the sociologist, that there are no masses, only ways to see people as masses. I'm not a mass, you're not a mass, you're not a mass, and that has to change the way government deals with us. One of my big lessons, I think, from looking at this era was that we are in the midst of a creation generation. We all like to create stuff and leave our marks on things. But of course, that isn't just this generation. We've always had the opportunity to create. We couldn't find our audience. And so the key here is to find this wonderful wellspring of creativity that comes from people and how to uh, help use that. Um, don't be evil. Uh, I obviously had to deal with that. And I learned in the process of researching the book that that really isn't, as it might seem, Google's hubristic statement of great virtue from the mountaintop. It is instead Google saying to its employees that they have a license to question what the company is doing. That a, a geek can sit in the meeting and say, should we really do that? Is that evil? And, and I've been fond of saying lately that we should have put those words, don't be evil, over the doors of Wall Street and insurance companies. And I'm an optimist, to a fault. But, it, but I imagine just a few more people in a few meetings would have maybe said at some point, should we really give that guy a mortgage when we know he can't afford it? Isn't that evil? Should we really sell things we're calling toxic assets? Isn't that on its face evil? 
Well, how do we set up government so that more people can ask that question as they go without fear? We'll come back to that as well. Um, I think we have to find a new efficiency about government as well. Uh, one of my cheap PowerPoint lines, I'm sparing you, up in the PowerPoint at least, is in the newspaper world, is that we should do what we do best and link to the rest. But there's an efficiency here to be had that the idea of having to do everything for everyone and come up with one size fits all products is no longer the case in media now and it's no longer the case in government. To treat us all as if we're the same, we're part of that mass, is dead and over. We've got to specialize. The internet demands specialization. So the most obvious lesson, I think, from looking at Google is that what they really did to grow to be huge was not borrow huge amounts of capital to acquire huge companies. Right? How do they grow? They grew by creating platforms and networks. And I believe that is how growth will occur after we go through what we go through. I think it's more than a financial crisis and it's more than a recession. It is this shift to the next era. And in this next era, growth will come from platforms and networks. So the question we come to then is what does it mean for government to turn into a platform? How could we all use government in new ways? Uh, friend Craig Newmark who's here somewhere uh, says, uh, I have a line in the book that quoting him, that, that, uh, get out of the way. When Craig started Craigslist, he had no idea that it would, uh, shall we say, affect the entire classified industry and newspapers. Uh, he had no idea that after Katrina, people would use this thing to find jobs and homes and each other. He created some neat code and gave it to people. And you know you've won when people take it over and make it their own and surprise you and do what they want to with it. I'm fond of thinking about this. If Microsoft had created Craigslist, it would have been ugly in a different way. Uh, it would have come with a very long manual and it would have come with a paperclip telling you how to use it. Right? But Craigslist didn't have to do that because it was obvious it wasn't Craigs, it was, it was the communities and the community figured out what to do with it. Well, shouldn't that be government? So I want to come running down the audience in a few minutes uh, acting like a jerk and, and find out what you think government as a platform can be. What is government as an API? Not just the information, but what comes across. What is government as a network? And we tend to think it's their job, we're paying them, they should do it. What if the functions and needs of society as seen through government were put out as calls for action from us that we can help in, we can volunteer in? As Clay so brilliantly points out in his book, the 1% the, the rule, what is it Clay, is it 1.4% Wikipedia? Yeah, not quite 2%. Not quite 2% of Wikipedians, uh, you, uh, those who read Wikipedia make Wikipedia. If it were double that, it would be even more chaos. So we don't all have to do the same thing in government, but if government were a network, if, we could, if it could do what it did best and link to the rest and the rest is us, and we could join in and do things together, what would that look like? What if we wanted to put together a project to find out how computers are used in our schools and we mobilized ourselves to do that, to then take action? What would government as a network look like? So I want to raise four cautions here. I first want to mention the other big lesson I learned from Google in this process is the notion of the beta. That of course when Google releases a beta, it is saying, it is a, it is a statement of humility and humanity from even Google. For it says, this we're giving you, I sound like God, sounds like communion, uh, I give unto thee Google News. Uh, but it is not perfect, it is unfinished. Help us finish this thing. And certainly that's the way life is, it's what we all do. But we have this myth of perfection that came out of the industrial age. You spent six years tooling up an auto factory. When that thing came out, by God, it better be perfect. So we're going to call it perfect, even though it's a piece of junk. And I see tons of them sitting over in Jersey on my drive in every day. Um, so a beta government. So four, four cautions. The first, I spoke with, a, with Mika at a bunch of uh, government webmasters in Washington, which is a much more fun group than you might imagine. Uh, and what became you yeah, Yay, government women. Um, how many of you from out of town? Uh, so, uh, what became clear to me in talking to folks in government more than once is that we must give government permission to fail. That everyone in government has this <laughs> bad comic steps on the line. Um, that, that we have this expectation. And that, that has to come not from government, but from us, from the people. We have to find the way to help government try things, experiment, innovate, learn by failing. What became very clear to me is that every government person I talked to has a phobic 
relationship to failure. If I screw up, my boss is going to get me, I'm doomed, and that's why I'm not going to do anything, right? So the first challenge we have is permission to fail. The next is that I love transparency. I, I preach transparency at every opportunity. I live obnoxiously transparently myself. Uh, if you go to my about page, you'll learn far too much about me. But there's a danger to transparency, I think. That the, what we've been doing so far in this notion of transparency is part of the school of get the bastards in government. Now, there are plenty of bastards to get. I, I, I won't deny that. But if the conversation always stays in the idea of when you release your stuff, we make you release your stuff, we're going to get you. We've only created a disincentive to transparency. We have to figure out how to start with things that are not about necessarily expense accounts. I want them out too. Oh yeah, I want them out too. But I think we have to find the ways to make government and its actions, as I say, in default, searchable and linkable and clickable. So if we demand transparency, that's a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing. But if immediately it causes the problem of the turnaround of, we gotcha, that's a problem. I, I, I write something privileged to write for The Guardian, and I've been following with great interest the expense scandal in the UK, and I'm sure most of you have followed that as well, and the data is amazing, and I want to see the same things out of Congress here, and I want to see a FOIA and a Sunshine Act for Congress, and I want all that too. And we will find bad stuff. I also think that in, in, in the notion of newspapers in metro areas dying, which is going to happen, and I believe that we'll have a, a new ecosystem uh, coming into its place, I think the transparent government has a role there. For when you have transparency of our government information, you go from having one or two state house reporters to having potentially millions of watchdogs. And that's a good thing. And, it, and government transparency is something we've got to lobby for because it holds a role in this new world. But we need to see that danger. Uh, number three is the question of how do we make government truly collaborative? Uh, it's a little kumbaya moment here, the us versus them stuff. But if you have this notion of government as a network, if you have this notion of ganging together to get something done together, the 2% rule, the Wikipedia government role, what does that look like? How can we make government collaborative? And then the fourth, and then I want to come out and, and play Oprah and have you tell me what Google government looks like, is how do we turn the positive to the constructive? It's a corollary to this problem of, of transparency. The discussion is always government is screwing up, government is costing too much money, it's not doing the right things, uh, they're crooked, it's a mess, right? And again, that's true in more ways than we want to admit. But how do we then turn the conversation, what we talk about with government, to the positive, to the constructive, to saying, we can get this done together. Look, we got it done. Somebody tried something new, good for them. We learned a lesson. I think that these four imperatives of giving permission to fail, transparency, making government collaborative, and making the discussion constructive, rest not on government's shoulders, but on our shoulders. Because government's sitting there saying, I've been burned. What was George Bush's great line about being burned? I've been burned too often, and I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to be very cautious. So where do we go? Um, so I'm going to come down in a second. Uh, I want you to tell me what you think googly government is. Uh, I, I went to a, a Jeff Pulver session about this, and I talked about the notion of a googly restaurant. And it was great fun. because my, my starting point is the googly restaurant uh, has what? It's decorated in primary colors of red and blue and green and yellow. It probably has M&Ms on every table. Um, you sit on big red, red round balls. Uh, the food is free and great. Um, and all around the room, people just started shouting out what they think a googly restaurant was. So for example, just to give you a little, a little example, one of the people said, well, of course, at the end of the meal, you are forced to eat a cookie so they can follow you around everywhere you go. <laughs> so beat that. I want to mention just two more quotes, real quick. David Weinberger, who, who releases bull mole, like both people chew gum, uh, he'll be mad at me for, for setting the stage for him. But he said at some conference that I saw on tweet once this line: "There is an inverse proportion. I'm sorry. There is an inverse relationship between control and trust." And I think that's so important that we don't trust government, and government does not trust us. It does not give over control. Newspapers don't trust us. They don't give us information and process. How do we figure out how to get trust going on both sides? It's kumbaya again. I admit, but that's the key of the essence. Finally, Mark Zuckerberg. 
uh, was speaking to a bunch of media moguls when I was lucky enough to be there two years ago. And one of the moguls, I won't name because it was off the record as far as he was concerned, but he's the scion of a major publishing company nearby that on a building people like to climb up. <laughs> <laughs> and he begged Zuckerberg, he begged Mark, he said, Mark, how do we get a community like you? We should have a community, right? We should be able to build one on one. How? Tell me how. Zuckerberg, after this impassioned, I mean it was a passion plea, had a two-word answer. You can't. <laughs> Full geeky stare, right? And he said that you're asking the wrong question. Communities already exist without you. They're already doing what they want to do without you. Your question, moguls, is how do you help them do what they want to do better? And his prescription for this, I love this, was that you bring them elegant organization. Isn't that lovely? I want to make t-shirts with that. Elegant organization. And when you think about it, that's of course what government is there for, is to help us elegantly organize our communities, our societies, our needs, and our lives. That's what media and news should be there for. So I'm going to run around real fast, and I want you to just hold your hands or yell out what you think Googling government should be for five minutes. Oh, thanks. All right, don't shame me here and make a fool of myself. Somebody, hand up, shout out, yes. Real quick, lightning round, real fast. Uh, a citizen-based distributed network for a, an individually controlled uh, user, an individually controlled uh, commons dedicated account enabling political micro-contribution and all contribution for charity uh, or political purposes. Cool. In color. It should be easy to understand. Yeah. <laughs> MyGov.gov, a dashboard for everything you want to do with government. Yeah. Well, yes. I'll come over there. I promise. I promise. I like Templeton's idea of the Twitter government, which explains what it's doing in 140 characters or less. <laughs> no, we have that. It's called sound bites. <laughs> so it would probably be actually sort of like Google, where the 1% that actually create things are the ones that do what they want, and then the 90% of like things that need to get done probably wouldn't. Lemmings aren't bad. I'm going to go back around. Up, up, up. Yeah, shout. I want to see more graphics, more info, information, less words. How did you do on your SATs? <laughs> Get right back here. No, nope. all right, we'll run around. Hold on. Yes, back here. Uh, the first cookbook of everything that works in America. Yes. Yes, I love that. Searchable. Searchable, linkable, clickable, permalinked. Yes, right require the uh, government to separate data from code and make a data API available to everyone and force the internal organizations to use the same API that they make available. Amen to that. If I fall, I'm uh, suing. Labs. Labs. Three more words. Three more words. Twitter like. Google Labs. The government Bravo. Labs. Innovation. Citizen 2.0, not government 2.0. Who's you, that? That's a great voice. <laughs> universal subsidized broadband. Yay! A political moment for me. We're, we're bailing out the past, and we should be bailing out the future, damn it. The money going to GM should go to broad freaking brand. Yes. And the Democratic Republican duopoly. Well, that's up to us to do, isn't it? And that's what the internet, I think, allows. I wrote a column in The Guardian years ago, uh, two years ago, about the notion of whether the internet is essentially left or right. And at first I thought it was libertarian because the original bloggers were heavily libertarian. But then I realized, no, it's nothing. It allows us to coalesce in all kinds of ways under new, less simplistic definitions. So let's do it, people. It needs an algorithm, not just a thumb icon. What is that? Well, I don't know what a social and governance algorithm looks like. It's more than math, but it needs one. Because right now it's a little too simplified. It, uh, instead of a button that says, I'm feeling lucky, a button that says, I'm feeling useful to get involved. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, how's my time? Oh! Should be accessible. When I tweet Barack Obama or Carol Browner, I want them to tweet back. Okay, okay, but you do want them to work too. Yeah. But yeah. I, want someone, I want someone to respond. Ah, that's different. Okay. okay. All right. Let me be a gatekeeper. Let me nominate and vote in a very granular way on where my taxes go. There's a company called Local Motors in, in, in Boston that's starting, uh, they're gonna run um, uh, mini factories with 41 employees putting out uh, 3,500 units of new designs. The designs are created by the community. Love this story, one second, 
Love this story because um, the community loved this one taillight. Loved it. And the, the head of local motors said, okay, that's great, uh, it's your decision, but we'll have to tool up for that. It'll add a thousand bucks to each car. And the community said, okay, never mind. And they found a $95 Honda taillight that was designed around and beautiful, and they saved the money. Given the authority, given the trust, given the control, people can make responsible decisions together. Now, Mika and I were talking before, wherever he is, about the notion that the discussion too often turns to the nuts and to the gaming. So it can't just be pure democracy. It has to go through filters. Um, in Google government, you have to throw up the cookie. Throw up the cookie? Yeah. Yeah. Highly measurable. Ah, yes. But who sets the measurements? Who says what? Yeah. We should be able to do that ourselves. And with the API, we can. Yes. Get the bugs out. <laughs> no, bugs are features. <laughs> We need bugs so that we can then, we can't make government perfect. That's the other thing. We can't assume perfection in government. Government cannot, will not, will never be perfect. So bugs are life. Yeah. Actually, it would be so bad if I, didn't, if I said that the government shouldn't be Googleified. For example, um, releasing a whole bunch of betas. Government policies affect a lot of people's lives. And a whole bunch of betas could really you have a lot of bugs. But betas are part of the collaborative process. Beta says this isn't done yet. And rather than just throwing up a trial balloon in media, this says before we finish this, you have a real chance to be involved. That's what beta says. Yes. Uh, yeah. give, citizens, give citizens the opportunity to get engaged in solving their own local problems. So community gardens into public school lunches, um, those sort of things. We need to turn the government into an open source community. That means issue trackers, mailing lists, revision control, and facilitate a true meritocracy. Government by geeks. Yeah. Yay, okay, hold on. Can I have a government for Google to make it open and democratic? <laughs> I was waiting for that. Next. Is that it? Oh, okay, hold on. I'm running around. On the way, short stop. Return to the concept of, of basic research investment. We're living off of the 50s and 60s. Government, a Google government, invests in the future. And change our education system to stop turning out people for an industrial age, all the same, all with the same supposedly right answer, which is bull. And I say that because my son is going through SAT hell now. Yes. Um, go uh, government employee, 20% time. And on that note, I see Mika creeping, so I think my time is up, right? No. One more. You have one minute to sum up. Okay. No, sum up hell. They also want. Feet other way. Thank you. Hit it. Make it rapid and responsive. Rather than deliberative. That's an interesting problem because sometimes deliberative is better, sometimes rapid works. You're right. Yes. Uh, Google doesn't use anything but open source software, as far as I know. Why not do that for the government? No, they, they use a few things that are secret sauce, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking as one of the government people, you're all going to write to your congressman and tell them to fund all of this, right? <laughs> With taxes you're going to pay, right? No, we're going to volunteer all kinds of help, and it's going to save money because we're more efficient. Uh, I will summarize from down here. Thank you very much. The, the issue isn't Google government. The issue is a government for the Google age and for a new age. And if anybody's going to build it, God damn it, you're the ones who are going to do it, so get busy. Thanks.